injury heard round the football world. Snap, crackle, pop goes the Achilles. Uh, that would be one in battle quarterback Deshaun Watson. Carted off. Give him the old golf cart there. They anticipate, they expect to find out confirmation. It is a popped Achilles tendon. And that happened in the first half. Watson's leg crumbled. It was a non-contact, non-contact play as he dropped back to pass about a minute and a half to go until halftime. And that is, generally speaking, always an Achilles injury. If it's a non-contact situation, the leg just gives out. As he planted, Watson's calf appeared to quiver before that's it. And he dropped to the turf. Watson His third season with the Browns, likely over. And his career in Ohio, it's being talked about, that this is also over. So I want to start with that, then we'll get to the Komodo dragon in the room. Let us discuss the question. Has Deshaun Watson played his final snap in a regular season game for the Browns? So I've got four-star general, lifetime membership, and John Lennon. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make the baba ganoush is what we're going to make. We haven't made that in a while, so we'll make the baba ganoush. Now, first of all, to answer the question, has Watson played his final game? What should happen is yes, but the answer to the question is he will play again for the Browns. So I'm shaking my head no. He has not played his final game for the Browns, uh, this is the kind of goblin that follows you around. You understand what I'm saying? Like This is a haunting situation. This is a poltergeist, the Deshaun Watson poltergeist situation. Watson, he's not going to be playing for this foreseeable future. Because if you look at the timeline for an Achilles injury, generally speaking, it is a year from Injury, operation, and then you come back, and here we are. If you look at the calendar here, we're in late October. And so you say, okay, so a year from now. But that means Watson has to ramp back up at that point, and who knows if there's any setbacks. Uh, So the Browns are going to have somebody else play quarterback now, Jameis Winston, although he didn't play in this game for reasons that we'll get to in a second. Uh, But he did make some news anyway, so – the point is Watson's going to be out for at least a year. So for the rest of this year, forget about it. And the beginning, the first two months of next year, he's also out. But in terms of the contract, it doesn't change, right? Uh, cutting Watson now would create $172 million in dead money. Now, I am a salary cap truther. But the reason I'm a salary cap truther is because most contracts are not fully guaranteed. In fact, the only one that is fully guaranteed is Deshaun Watson. And so if it's not fully guaranteed, it's Fugazi or Fugazi, depending how you say it. But the, the point is, with Watson's contract being fully guaranteed, there's no wiggle room. That's why it's different than all other contracts. Now, even if they released him in 2025 and they said, okay, we're going to release Watson, you know how they that post-June 1st, date where you can release players and supposedly save money, that that would still result in a $118.9 million charge of dead money. He also has a no-trade clause. So you say, okay, well, what about if they wait a little bit? What if they uh, they say, we'll wait another year? Well, he, he's owed $92 million combined in 2025 and 2026. Watson must be tough. Final two years of the contract. But more importantly, when you – You go up to a plane 30,000 feet in the sky and you look down here, despite Watson being a four-star general in the Vomit Comet, he continues to have the support of Jimmy Haslam, the Browns owner, also the GM, Andrew Barry, and chief nerd and former baseball executive Paul DePodesta have all endorsed, publicly anyway, privately I'm thinking they're saying something else, but they're trying to save face. They're trying to get something. It doesn't appear... Uh, It it does appear, rather. They're trying to save the contract. They're like, well, it's a small sample size. He's been hurt a lot. But once he gets healthy, man, is he going to take off. And that boob, Kevin Stefanski, that dodo, the head coach there, who's essentially massaging on a weekly basis the very delicate ego of Deshaun Watson. He's a fractured ego for Watson. 
And so you expect them to say he's going to be back, and I do expect he will be back. Whether he plays again, he will play at some point, but he's not going to play for another year. Uh, and so it, the whole thing's a uh, uh, fooey. You go fooey is what you do. All right, now, page two. So Jameis Winston, a bunch of guys had things to say uh, following uh, this. Uh, here's Jameis Winston commenting. We actually have a little bit of this. Here's Winston commenting, and he's always – so dramatic, it's like a Shakespearean play when Winston is addressing topics. But here's him commenting on the fans of Cleveland celebrating and cheering loudly the demise of one Deshaun Watson. I am very upset with the reaction to a man that has had the world against him for the past four years, and he put his body and life on the line for this city. I know you love this game. And when I first got here, I knew these were some amazing fans. But Deshaun was treated badly, and now he has to overcome another obstacle. Get my towel out. I'm crying a little bit. Uh, so Watson, uh, you heard what Winston had to say there about Watson and that he put his life on the line for the city. He did. Uh, then you had Miles Garrett, who said – of Browns fans, he said they should be ashamed after booing Deshaun Watson's injury, saying he's been a model citizen. Okay. Is that how you see it? And that's just the tip of the spear. There's plenty of others that we just chose these two randomly, Jameis Winston and uh, also Miles Garrett, upset with the Browns fans. So is that how I see it? I mean, how about N plus O? No, no way. Uh, I understand the mindset. You've got to defend your teammate, and you're part of this fraternal order in the NFL. I understand that. But spoiler alert, the fan. You don't understand what it's like to be a fan. You're a player. You don't get the fan. You don't understand the fan. You never will because you're not a real fan. You're a player. You're an employee. It's different, right? You're on the stage. You're not in the crowd. Just like the players like to talk about the man in the arena. Well, the man in the arena is one thing, but the fanatic who uses the most valuable resource that we have in life, our time, to emotionally invest in that product, that's a different animal. You don't get it. You'll never get it. And I don't care how long you play in the NFL. You're just, you're not a real fan. You know how they make the sausage. And therefore, you're not a real fan. Uh, you know, the idea that he's a model citizen is a bunch of poppycock. And Miles Garrett knows it's a bunch of poppycock. Uh, Watson has a lifetime membership on the naughty list. He does. Uh, and as for the customers, the emotional investment is there. And then you have Jameis Winston. I must have forgotten when that day that Deshaun Watson jumped on that roadside bomb to save, put his life on the line for the people of Cleveland. I must have, I must have not been paying attention that particular day. Uh, I do know that he will be spending a lot of time with massage therapists, so bad news for them, uh, getting that happy baby yoga pose, and he'll be clapping. Uh, but really, what, what happened here, the fans, let me explain the mindset of a fan, okay? The fan was not necessarily cheering for Watson's injury. They were celebrating the decision that had been made for the team to bench Deshaun Watson. Say what? Yeah. Anybody but Deshaun was the mindset. And the reason the fans were cheering, Watson should have been benched weeks ago. This is on Kevin Stefanski. This is on Cleveland Browns ownership. If you had done the right thing and said, I don't care how much we're paying Watson, this guy is a lost leader, he can't play, we're going to bench him. Just do the right thing then this wouldn't have happened. This is on Kevin Stefanski, the head coach. This is on the ownership uh, all the way from the very top of the Cleveland Browns organization, right? We talked about him being a four-star general on the Vomit Comet, Deshaun Watson, but Jimmy Haslam, Andrew Barry, the GM, owner GM, Kevin Stefanski, chief nerd Paul DePetes. This is on them. The reason that happened is because you didn't do the right thing. And that a guy working as a plumber knows more about football than you do. And the only reason you left Watson in there to eventually get hurt was because you were trying to save face. So that's on the Browns. So really what they were doing was the proper thing to fans because these idiots kept sending Watson out there when he didn't deserve to play. So that's what happened. 
And that's it. And even if they were, bo- Watson's the most booable person in all of sport right now. You can boo him. It's okay. You're allowed to boo. Boo, 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 boo. Boo, boo, boo. Yeah, boo. All right, come on. It's like this is some kind of terrible tragic. No, it's not. He's paid. He'll find. He'll he'll recover. He'll be all right. It's gonna be a lot of pain and agony. The Achilles injury is a very painful injury, but he'll he'll be back at some point and he'll throw more interceptions and lead the Browns to ten points in more games. That'll happen. All right. Now, final thought. We have another quarterback snafu. We head to Jersey, where Saquon Barkley was the headline. He had 176 yards, big time performance, pair of touchdowns. The Eagles get the sweet taste of victory, and Barkley gets a giant plate of revenge against his former team. But that's not the story. The quarterback benched is the story here with Malik Neighbors out and uh, out there running around. Neighbors said, he had, he had the money quote, he ripped his quarterback, Daniel Jones, for not getting him the ball in this game as he returned. He said, watch the target tape. That was it. I was open. A neighbor said of his quarterback. Now, after being benched, what in this was in the fourth quarter of a blowout? What does the future hold for Daniel Jones? Keeping up with the Joneses with the Giants. So Daniel Jones is living a John Lennon, Lennon tune. He's living a John Lennon tune, Daniel Jones. And uh, that tune is on borrowed time. Now, you say we're all on borrowed time. But Daniel Jones, this was a make-it-or-break-it season. Spoiler alert! Spoiler He sucks! He is poo! He's terrible! He's the guy we always thought he was, and so the Giants know it. They know it. They know he can't play. You look around. The teammates have changed. The coaches have changed. The offensive play callers have changed. The one common denominator is Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, the dime store quarterback. The guy stinks. There's no other way to say it. That is Daniel Jones. And you look at Daniel Jones' career, and he's unable to improvise. He's a one-read quarterback. He locks in on his first target, and if they cover that, he doesn't know what to do. I don't know know what to do. Uh, He's also terrible at maneuvering the football. The Giants have changed offensive linemen. They've they've gotten some blue-chip offensive linemen. But a lot of low-information fans don't understand that many of the sacks are a product of the quarterback, not the offensive line. So you like to blame fat people. You hate fat people. I get it. But it's usually the, the quarterback that's responsible for the sacks. And so they can change all the offensive linemen they want. It doesn't matter. Uh, he's just harebrained, right? And he's a rabbit in the headlights is Daniel Jones. And he's going to Take Brian Dable with him. Dable will be out of work. He'll be fired. He'll be the offensive coordinator for the Patriots next year or somewhere else. And it's Dante's Inferno is what it is. And Drew Locke, who's also an option, he played at the end of this game. He's terrible too. But at some point, based on the the numbers, Daniel Jones, there's some guarantees in his contract for next year. So remember when Derek Carr got benched at the end of last season, his last year with the Raiders, because they, they were worried and they didn't want to pay out so bonuses, the same thing's going to happen here where Vanilla Vic will be sat down. 